Hello, Monster Bound here, looking at the patch notes for update 1.3.0. That's right, we've got the third patch update. What does it contain? I don't know. I've honestly not... Ooh, the more regiments run out. I've not looked at this yet. This is authentic. Authentic first feels. Ooh. Anyway, um... <laughs> Now, more regiments of renown. Good, that takes each of the regiments of renown to two, which is better than one. Um, it's almost, in fact, double better than one. So, 100% increase. Pretty good. Uh, the, we've got the Righteous Lances of Wei Jin, the great Longmar riders. These formidable lances are guardians of Grand Cafe Sky Fleets. They've got a Sky Fleet. I do have a lot of hot air balloons. I don't know if that's a sky fleet. These elite bodyguards protect and serve as the bodyguards and lords of the skies, cutting through the thickest armor with their master crafted weapons. Reduce damage taken by lords and heroes that are close to this unit. Okay. Um, they do have armor piercing attacks, so good. Heralds of Corn, Blood Crushers of Corn, riding to battle with the heat of Corn's fury. The heralds make kindling of all who would challenge them on the battlefield. They wield some of the most ravenous of Corn's cursed blaze and take very little to enrage the spirits, possess them with fire us. So they have Mantle of Immolation, converts weakness to fire and all enemy units within the area effect. Now, a lot of Corn's units do have fire attacks, so actually, pretty fucking good. Not gonna lie. Oath Brothers of Tor, War Bear Riders. Tick, because. Bears. I don't even need to look at anything else. Uh, lightning ripples across the weapons and armor of the Oath Brothers. Gifts from the patron god Tor, the kids they've got of thunder, allowing them to deliver cutting magical attacks to their foes. They have Call of Tor, bombards all enemy units surrounding the unit with lightning strikes. Blind the blinded effect. Oh, and they have magic attacks. Okay, okay. Pox Riders of Nurgle. Barons of the Bog. To be near the Barons is to suffer the Wasting Sickness, a weakening aura that weakens the sword arms of nearby opponents. At the same time, the Vile Steeds revitalize nearby demons of Nurgle with fetid gases. <laughs> That's kind of like me. Re uh, so they restore vigor to nearby allied units and reduce the potency of enemy weapons and massive units caught within... Oh, okay, interesting. Interesting. Okay, cool. Sky Riders, crushers with great weapons. These unstoppable riders call the peaks of the long lost titans their home. They explore the mountaintops and fashion the forgotten steel of the sky titans to crude armor and weapons, adding to their potency in battle. So they have frostbite attacks, increased weapon damage, and missile resistance. Sure. Got the Eternal Entourage. The presence of the Eternal Entourage empowers nearby champions to new heights. Their worship filling the chosen idol with strength and prowess. So obsessive adoration empowers the melee attack and weapon strength of nearby friendly lords and heroes. Interesting. And perfect figure. Hmm, okay. Knights of Immolation. Wielding lances imbued with Zinchian fire, the Knights of Immolation ride into battle on particularly spiteful discs of Zinch spewing fire on the enemy's blow. We know they might not look like traditional mounts, but don't let that fool you. These elite cavalry are nonetheless deadly. Uh, they have bombards enemies directly blow with fire damage, also confers the warp flame contact effects, and they have magic attacks and flaming attacks. Okay, cool. Uh, land battles joining rank. Okay, so you've got some more maps for the land battle pool. Fine, I don't really play my play, but there we go. Okay, so stability and performance. Thanks to the amazing work of one of our community modders, Spartan 4, and their UI performance patch mod stuttering issues, which brought to attention when hovering over components of the UI, particularly when you have multiple mods installed. The root issue is caused when the game searches for UI modifications that are supposed to overwrite the base look of the UI. The stuttering occurs when the game cannot find a modded file in the manifest of the retail game data, at which point it broadens its search to search through the rest of the mod files on the disk. <laughs> Holy shit. Really? <laughs> The more mods you have installed, the more folds it has to explore, and more stuttering experience as it does. Now, this, I know you might look at that and go, what the fuck? Come on, guys. But actually, I can kind of see how this this thing... I, I used to be... Well, I, 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 still, I still dabble with programming, but I used to be a programmer. And I can tell... It's just unintended. It. I always think of programming as, like, The Magician's Apprentice, right? You start off with a broom getting some buckets of water and before you know it you've flooded your bedroom it, it's because you it's impossible to think through the entire repercussions of what you're doing until you see it so i can totally understand how that could happen so 
Uh, the workaround offered by the UI performance is duplicate the mod piles in the initial search location, thus negating the need for additional searching and improving performance at the cost of duplicating data. The fix we've implement implemented today goes one step further, creating a persistent reference of whether a modification exists in the initial file that gets searched. So basically, they fix that. Great, fantastic. So improved UI assets are loaded over extended sessions in order to reduce stuttering and frame drops. We will continue to investigate performance optimization when navigating the UI to adjust to so blah, blah, blah. Fine, good. Table the cursor in benchmarks to prevent good. Fix an issue. Fine, fine, fine. All good. Fix an alpha fade out uh, at death of blue horrors to ensure their bodies are cleared from the battlefield upon their death. Fine. UI fixed several instances with uh, descriptive text of buildings failed to account for latest balance changes. Fine. I mean, should have been done before now, but fine. Fix the descriptive technology of ogre monster building chain for settlements to match the version built in camps. Okay. Remove the white bar display at the top panel when entering battle with dark elf units, which include an army of different faction, such as when seduced. Okay. I'm assuming that's just missed out because they weren't expecting people to fight dark elves that often. Uh, several changes we made to the character details panel. The list of characters at the top of the character now uses the same sorting as lords and heroes drop down. Lords are displayed first alongside their embedded heroes. That is very useful. Really like that change. Makes, makes searching through them much easier. Lord and display with a different frame, different from heroes. Great, particularly because like the particularly the demon factions, their their initial lords and their heroes look very fucking similar. So it's very easy. You just have to click through them until you find the right one, which is kind of annoying. Uh, embedded heroes on display with smaller icons and lines drawn to the lord. Perfect. That's amazing. Really like that change. Brilliant. Uh, so, to prevent instances where ranged units hold their fire because of friendly units in their line of fire, overlapping units are now considered, by the game, part of the units. This should ensure that ranged units are more consistently carrying fire. Oh, perfect, because I've noticed that firing uh, missile units tend to just, like, not shoot a lot of the time, um, which is really annoying. So glad to see that uh, that's been fixed. Small or multiple entity artillery and chariot units will no longer have collision when killed. Oh, thank fucking God. Jesus Christ, the number of times I got... I swear there was a battle where Scarbrand just got stuck and I couldn't use him for the rest of the battle. It's like... Oh, thank fuck for that. Why, why, why did they even have collision? Like, what? Maybe it was to do the mass changes. I don't know. The Zinch Nurgle Slash technology previously provided law pass abilities to greater demons are now instead now provide additional uses of the bound spell granted by other technologies. Good. Armies fleeing from the Bastion Gates are prevented from making attacks of opportunity, thus preventing progression blocking bug that occur during battles. Uh, okay, I don't quite understand what that means from Bastion Gates. Not sure. Autonomous riders and other—I mean, good. Autonomous riders and other entities are now properly reset after resurrection. This allows burning chariots to continue shooting when they were previously prevented from doing so. Uh, minor issue, but okay. Fixed a bug where match combat was not triggering for infantry units. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I didn't realize there was. Fix the bug which prevents certain items from expanding their winds of magic reserve. Excellent. Fix the bug which caused some entities in flying cavalry units, such as great longbow riders, to remain airborne after the units previously charged an enemy ground unit. Good. Fix the bug where flying units would wander aimlessly after abandoning melee combat. Good. Fix the bug where units would refuse to enter settlements until issued multiple attack orders. Yes, notice that one. Good, 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 good. When ordered to attack groups of units which include range units were now moved to a valid position where the range units can fire on the enemy instead of position in the same zone but too far away. Fine. Fine. Attrition from plays can become frustrating, frust bleh, frustrating to deal with in the game so we've made some adjustments to how it... I, I find it annoying when it affects me. <laughs> <laughs> Not when it affects the AI. The AI has so many fucking bonuses to deal with that it, it doesn't really affect them. Uh, reduce the base duration of the ague plague from three to two. That's okay. Uh, replace attrition effect of the flux with an increase in casualties from attrition. That's nice because the flux, I think, already have the same effect as one of the effects of plague. So nice. Uh, Demon Prince removes attrition effect from Bowel Steam and increases no corruption advised. That's fine. Uh, replace attrition effect from red ague with increasing co uh, cause. That's that's fine. I like that. That's okay. We notice the Zinch AI faction's use of changing the ways can become quite irritating. No shit. So minor Zinch factions can no longer change. Uh, good. Increase the cooldown. Brilliant. Because oh my god, so irritating. 
Improved how the AI focus uh, scouts forest to generate more informed. Okay, that's nice. Improved how the AI utilizes summoned units in battle. Okay. Fix several issues where it allows the AI to use abilities when it shouldn't, including after the conclusion of battle. I have noticed that, and I like that change. An issue with the AI army would focus almost exclusively on backline units is being addressed to encourage more meaningful tactics on the battlefield. Thank fuck, because I've noticed that they will just go out. They will they will literally try and like push through your units to get. It's, it's almost like rabid zombies trying to grab at your missile unit. So I'm so glad they've changed that. Great. Um, also just an issue during siege battles when, uh, which would compel the AI to scale walls and march through defending units to enter the city. Yes, I've noticed that as well. And I'm so glad that's fixed because it's so irritating. <laughs> Direct damage spells now deal magical, non-physical damage, meaning that physical resistance will no longer serve as a layer of defense as it did previously. Good, because spell resistance is a thing. Exploit fixes. Mana reserve effects, such as those provided by Jade Amulet, are now correctly applied, preventing an issue which results in infinite magic reserves. Fantastic. Okay. So, we've increased the power of Legendary Lord's innate character traits based on feedback from the community. So, upon a defeating the Demon Prince, the attrition effect now applies to all forms of attrition. Good. Upon defeating Catherine, enables frostbite attacks of Victorious Lord. That's quite nice, because Stalton gives flaming attacks. Fair enough. Uh, Kugath, unless, unless, unless it overwrites an even better effect. I'm thinking like Scar Six Death Juice here. As long as it doesn't overwrite that, it's fine. Uh, further reduce the ability of a plague to spread from minus 20 to minus 80, increasing. Oh, I see. That's the. Um, okay, that's 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 fine. I like that. That's okay. Uh, Scarbrand Charge and Weapon Strength trait bonus now applied to the whole army. Really nice. Uh, Grease's gold tooth income from all buildings by 20%, which only affects the local province, so yeah, yeah, it's it's better. Scrag the slaughter replaces Winds of Magic increase uh, with increased reserve capacity plus eight. That's better. Uh, Nakari speed plus six percent for Lord's Army, that's nice. And added Winds of Magic power reserve capacity plus five for defeating Kairos. Good. Demons of Chaos. Plague Troopers replace the charge bonus with up to melee defense plus six for Nurglings, Plague Bearers, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay, that's fine. Grand Cathay. Uh, Crane Gunners reduce bullet penetration from two to one. Crane Gunners increase in cost, increase range for the Fire Rain Rockets and cost. That seems fine. Uh, Meow Ying can use an eye of the storm ability in combat. Good. Information attack. Soldiers have activated the ability will now see, actively seek out combat, making it more effective in frontline engagements. Perfect. Because that's the formation attack was more of an annoyance than anything else. Uh, Ying, uh, Yin and Yang harmony are now slightly better, which is good. Lord Magistrate's ability inspired defense are no longer mutually excused. All three abilities can be selected at the same time. Brilliant. Great, because to be honest, only having one of them seemed really lame. Added two new Mooks to the so they get excellent administrator, plus two control income from buildings, or astute general. That's nice. I like that. I mean, I don't... S they're, they're both, like, useful, but equally, I don't think either one is more useful than the other. So I think that's, that's generally fine. Skills. Blades of the Bastion. Reduced the charge bonus effect with melee plus five for peasant long spearmen, special dragon guard, jade warriors, jade warriors, uh, blah blah. Um, okay, that's better. That's nice to see. So they're looking at skills and making them better. That's great. Spell resistance ten percent for peasant long spearmen, special dragon guard, jade warriors. Okay, that's that's better. So that's I like that change. That's really good. Caravan master. Uh, fix the ordering of the skill in the first line it resulted in immortality skill being hidden. Oh, interesting. Although, to be honest, any caravan master making it to level 20 is a fucking god anyway. Uh, missile strength plus 6% for peasant archers. Okay, that that's nice. Yep, so they're, they're making some changes to skills here, and that's all good. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Uh, Fun change to Miao Ying skills, diplomatic relations with Cathay, persistent final longer applies its effect twice. K Desert Armor now applies 10 armor to melee units of Jamming's army, in addition to Jamming himself. Excellent. Uh, and diplomatic relations with Cathay plus 20. Fair enough. Cathay Dragon Fleet Aegis and Sea Dragon Eden are applied to the faction's capital rather than Han Yu port specifically. 
Good. Uh, harmonic balance, Yang, reduce the income effect from 40% to 15%. Uh, I can't quite remember what that does, but that sounds like a fairly significant nerf, which I imagine was probably needed. Shield of Nan Gao now provides grounded state. Okay. Alchemist Elixir of Puissance. Increased number of uses 1 to 2, and Iron Skin 1 to 2. Both good. I like that a lot. Corn, not many changes for corn here. Uh, some changes from you know, multiplayer costs. Gate of Corn starts with 60 second cooldown. Winoka went in melee. Oh, right. So you need to wait until they're in melee combat. Interesting. And Greater Gate of Corn went in melee combat. Okay, so that is for the cultists. 60 seconds seems like a long time, though. And 120 seconds as well. Will they have any effect? I, d I don't know. I'm not 100% sure about that, but we'll see. I wonder if that's the same with the other demon factions as well. Replace the leadership. Uh, corn Strode. Replace the leadership with uh, melee attack plus five for blood letters. Uh, corn exalted blood letters and chaos warriors were chosen. That's fine. Okay. So. Kids left. Fixed an issue which prevented Atman bonuses from applying the turn they came into effect. Minor issue, but fine. Boris Ursus now deals frostbite attacks. I mean, he was frozen for a long time, so okay. Armored Cossars, great weapons, increase their charge bonus from 16 to 20, and their melee defense from 30 to 32. Okay. The Hearth Blades, fire resistance from 20 to 40%. That does make them slightly more useful, but fire is still a... Well, is it? I don't know. I guess if you're fighting corn, it's really useful, but... I don't know. Elements Bear now grants the Chilling Aura Passability. Oh, that does make them more useful. That does make them more useful. Interesting. And Ice Guard by variants now grants 15% spell resistance. And charge bonus for the, for the Lancers is 60 to 70. Skills in the first group now offer only one effect at level 1, thus matching the format of skills provided to other races. Higher skill levels also provide multi effects as before. Skirmish traditions, the missile resistance effects now probably affects rank 7 units and above. Okay. Breach shows no longer applies benefits to basic and spear versions of Kossars, only armored Kossars and Streltsy. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, I mean, breach loaders would suggest a, a firearm and not bows. Anyway. Nurgle's been performing much better in battles. Oh, good. So, oh, it's a 30 and 60 second cooldown for Nurgle. Oh, when, when below 75 hit points. Interesting. So basically you have to get your character beaten up. Um, I mean, I guess that's fine because you have a lot of heals. In interesting. Uh, skills. Added plus five melee attack for Chaos Furies, Rock Flies, Plague Drones of Nurgle. Rank seven above. Great. Armor of Malady. Fixed initiative would prevent the melee defense benefit from being applied to Plague Bearers. Oh, thank fuck for that. Because yes, it was... Like, the armor was nice but did, did need some extra. Uh, Canker of Speed, melee defense, five uh, for Pox Riders. That's good. Putrid Resistance added, 50 missile resistance for player, uh, Beast of Nurgle, Soul Grind, and Great Unclean one. That's nice to see. Virulent Contagion added, speed, 10% for Nurglings, Plague Bearers of Nurgle, and Exalted Plague Bearers of Nurgle for a second. Okay, that's okay, quite like that. And uh, Locus of Virulence now grants 100% animo to Soul Grinders of Nurgle. Okay, I've still got some issues with the technology that Nurgle has. A lot of it feels like very meh still. Um, it's certainly better than it was, but okay. Ochre Kingdoms. So all three... So increasing the rewards granted... Oh, thank fuck for that. Yes, thank you very much, because let's face it, the contracts were pretty shit. Uh, they all... No, uh, right, so you get meat growth from camps or a rare magic item. Great, really like that. Roughly double the amount of gold. Uh, to be honest, you probably could have quadrupled it, but okay. Increase the mineral reward from 5,000 to 1,500, is it? Um, okay, so I guess if the minimum is 1,500, then the minimum you're going to get is 3,000, which is okay, I guess. Potentially more. Um, so, yeah, maybe. Modified Splash Attacks of Iron Guts and Man Eaters to hit small entities more consistently. Good. Uh, because I realised that was a bit of an issue. Stonehorn reduces missile resistance from 35 to 20%. That's fine. 
Uh, the combat skills for Greasers, Goldtooth, and Tyrants now only have two levels as opposed to three, as is the case with other lords. The first level is equivalent to the second level of other characters. Okay. Skills in the first group now only affect have offer one effect level one that's matching the format of skills that's fine continuous volley uh so speed increase for noblar trappers lead belchers noblar i mean that's fine richly rewarded weapon strength 12 percent for iron guts noblars and ogre balls fine trained beasts leadership plus five yeah whatever this resistance for man eaters gorges and giant units yeah, that'll probably come in handy for so we're boosting the stats of demonettes exalted demonettes as well as a soul scent passive to ensure the infantry heavy playstyles are significantly more relevant going forward. Cultists of Sinesh will also be able to see changes in the summoning abilities which force them to commit to combat. So, yes, yeah, so 15 seconds and 36 is when winning in melee combats. Interesting. So, fix an issue with uh, prevented Sinesh's wanton destruction ability from properly increasing the income generated by raising settlements. Good. Fix an issue with prevents the factions form impacts the beast men factions via diplomacy. Good, not there's many in Warhammer 3, of course, they usually die incredibly quickly. In general. Demon X Snesh increase hit points per model from 65 to 68. Not a massive increase, but per model. Uh, increase the base damage from 8 to 12. That's good. And charge bonus from 20 to 30. Okay, that is significant buffs to them, actually. Exalted Demon X get increase of charge bonus, base damage, and armor piercing damage. Okay. I do think the demonettes were, I mean, they were fine, but yeah, they did need something, didn't they? Soul set, increase the bonus armor piercing damage uh, cap from 25 to 50%, quite the boost. And they now need to be winning in combats uh, to be able to get their cooldown. And all laws now have a campaign skill that increases the replenishment rates of their troops. Oh, thank fucking God. Paul Slanesh and his replenishment. Uh, right. So, Zinch. Blue Horrors reduced ammunition from 5 to 4. Quite quite the reduction, but they were very effective troops. Um, Gate of Zinch, 60 second and 120 second cooldown only when Winds of Magic Reserve exceeds 15. Interesting. Uh, all Lords now have a campaign skill to increase the replenishment rates of their troops. Fantastic. Cursed Horrors increase the Missile Strength benefit from 4, 6, 8 to 8, 12, 16 for each skill levels. That's really nice. Uh, exalted uh, Locus of Conjuration that now grants 25% weapon strength for Horrors rather than plus 6 armor piercing damage. That's fine. And Wands of Whimsy, multiplayer cost is not really important. Right, campaign. Fix an issue where non-Chaos factions would not start new campaigns at war by default with nearby demon factions, such as when playing as Miao Ying or Sartorial's Watchers. Uh, so I assume... Interesting. So I wonder if that affects things like... Because I noticed that, like, Kugath and the Dwarves... If, if you're playing, like, uh... Nakari or something, the Dwarves will often attack you rather than Kugath because they're not at war with Kugath, despite the fact that they should be because they can see each other. So I wonder if that's that kind of thing. I, I genuinely don't know. Uh, fix an issue where our faction continue to interact with a subset of Rifts after a faction has already won the game. Uh, fine, not the biggest problem. Changes made to counteract the need to proactively camp the Forge of Souls once an AI has collected four souls and teleports to the Forge of Souls. It's a lot of souls. Um, when an AI teleports to the Forge of Souls, players will now be prompted to teleport and confront them. Note that this dilemma will only appear if the player faction's leader is in a state where they can teleport. Okay, I mean that does make it slightly better. Several changes made for the Kurgan Warbands. Oh, thank fuck. Jesus Christ. So, reduce the rate at which the threat meter fills. Brilliant. When the threat meter is not full, Kurgan Warbands will only spawn at each Bastion gate when it's raised. Fantastic. The threat meter now reduces when any faction attacks to beat the Kurgan Warband army rather than the Cathayan player. Brilliant. Improve visibility into when and why the threat meter is increased. Oh, yeah. yes, 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 love it, love it, love it, love it. Um... Fantastic. Really good, because as Cathay, it was a fucking nightmare to have the Bastion. Uh, 
because the Kurgan Warbands just always spawned. The best way to deal with them was just to let them spawn and just let them sit outside the gate and keep an eye on them. Uh, several issues have been fixed in Zinch's realm. Like, fuck. Sigils are now revealed upon entering and exiting a teleport locus. Action points are no longer removed when a player interacts. Thank you. AO factions must now teleport eight times before they can access the final area. Great, because the I mean one of the I mean say one of the major problems with Zinch's realm was the fact that the AI could easily beat the player without having to really try all that hard. Particularly that there was one there was one route where if the AI had teleported in on the same turn as the player, they would still win. Because even if the player knew exactly where to go, the AI would almost be, they would arrive on the same turn, effectively. So that, that's with cheating. That's with the player cheating, effectively. So trying to play it normally would have been a complete waste of time because the AI would have just beat you to it. So good. I still think there's a massive fucking problem with that realm. And with the Chaos Realms in general, but it, it's it's a good change, so okay. Finally, several adjustments have been made to the final encounter of Bellacore to make it less time-consuming and punishing. Reduce the rate at which units enter from the base of the map. Good. During the final wave, killing Bellacore will now cause the remaining demons to crumble and conclude battle. Fantastic. Although Bellacore is very easy to kill, so that will make that last segment take literally minutes, maybe two. Reduce the number of soul grinds to accompany Bellacore in the final wave, killing his own. Oh, thank God for that, because those guys were a nightmare. Uh, fix several issues with Remedy Bellacore from utilizing all his spells and abilities during the encounter. Okay, but I don't think he's going to live that long anyway, so. Battles. So, damage dealt to buildings now properly considered damage modifiers to both bases. Um, okay, so that's for towers, I guess, so that's nice. And I'll put, so that should make barricades even less useful. Fix the bug which prevents army abilities from using the current winds of magic and magic reserve levels. This also just an issue with Arcane Surge. Great, because Arcane Surge of course was fucking broken. Fix an issue with printed towers from being built at the end of the construction timer. Great. Fix the terrain bug which prevented certain towers from firing. Great. Improved articulated vehicle movements, i.e. chariots and artillery places to avoid sudden deaths or in areas which would float. Great, like the rice paddies. That was always fun. AI armies no longer discard enemy use of melee when retreating from an ambush battle. That's good because they weren't doing great. Um, domination battles, I'm not particularly interested with. I guess that would affect us. But I'm not super. Okay, so then in multiplayer is fine. Looking forward. While there's a ton of exciting stuff dropped in the game with today's build, we wanted to highlight a few oft-requested projects which are still in the works of the future. While we don't have an exact date when these will land in the game, you can watch us to confirm the development and release schedule. So HUD colour option. Oh, nice! To be able to change the colour. Whichever colour suits your fancy when conquering the world. Brilliant! That's a nice change. Settlement battle fatigue. One point in the code we'd like to address is the overall number of settlement battles encountered throughout the campaign. While we are hoping gameplay and battle fixes improve the current playability of settlements, we continue to work on a long term adjustment that will result in a more varied and enjoyable experience. Making the AI not constantly run away would be a massive fix to that. Making them less fixated on attacking a minor settlement without walls because it's an easy target. Making them braver to take you on or more competent in taking you on better because at the moment the reason you fight so many minor settlement battles is because one it's the only thing that doesn't run away for the player and two it's the only thing the ai will usually attack so that that if you need no, ca call me right call me for a good time good good time um, because I can tell you exactly what the problem is, and it's because that what I just said. Uh, Cafe formation attack. Originally announced in 1.3 preview, important change we tend to make in 1.3 involved granting units plus 9 melee defense upon activating this ability. Unfortunately, this particular tweak didn't make it into release, so we'll be ensuring it is added in 2.0. Okay, fine. So, overall, some good changes here. It still doesn't really address the major issue with the Realm of Chaos campaign, but I think it's fair to say at this point there's no point worrying about it, because we're, we're heading into the Immortal Empires release, and at that point, will anyone be playing the Realm of Chaos? Probably not. So, is there any point trying to fix it? 
Nah, let's just make Immortal Empires as, as good as it can be. Um, I think the Realm of Chaos is, it's fine. It's, it's okay. I wouldn't choose to play it, but it's generally okay. I'm hoping any future factions just don't interact with it. Um, because it's just not particularly great. I like the fact that looking at the settlement battle fatigue, um, I think, to be honest, the reason is fairly obvious, but that could just be me. And I could be wrong. Who knows? Um, I I am not a developer, so I, I don't have all these development tools to play around with. I'm hoping they find a fix to it, because they're right. It is kind of exhausting to play all those. I, I like the minor settlements. I just think, you know, so many of them is probably not the right way to do things, particularly because you obviously have to fight most of them because the order resolve but otherwise kick you in the nuts. So, yeah. Anyway, that's my thinking on patch, or well, the third patch. Hopefully patch four will be Immortal Empires. So fingers crossed for that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.